Welcome to Shul's Flashlight Reviews. So you got yourself a bunch of flashlights, and you've been doing this for a while, and you're starting to notice a difference in tints and CCTs, and you're narrowing in on what you really love, and your eye is telling you that one flashlight's greener than another, or your eye is telling you that one's warmer than another, but your eye just isn't good enough. You want to turn to tools. You want something objective rather than subjective. So you think about getting an Oppel or some other tool to measure. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Is this Oppel Lightmaster Pro good enough for the task? Should be using something else? I mean, there's some software that I've additionally used and covered in another video, which I'll have the link right here. And it's called LSP Evo. And I find it a very good low cost tool. It's not super, super accurate, but it's definitely better than me just guessing. But let's take a look at two hardware tools that actually use CMOS sensors and have custom software to boot for this task. So the Opel is an amazing deal at about 25 bucks. And I happen to have two of them here. And then we got the Sekonic. Now, I don't recommend anyone goes out and gets a Sekonic color meter because these things are $1,600. These are professional tools for videographers and photographers. But the purpose of having it here today is to see, is the Opel good enough? All right, let's take a look. So first off, notice that I have two samples here, and I've done a bunch of testing before this video, and I'll kind of get to my summary results in a moment because I got a sheet of paper over here with a bunch of data, and I'll let you look at that. But I wanted to let you know that I took delivery of two different Opals, one from Beanmaster on Reddit, and then my own, just to see if there's a lot of variance between samples. Now, this is only a sample size of two, but I noticed that they were pretty darn close together. Again, I'll show you my raw data later. But let's open up the Opel here. Let's go ahead and connect the iPad to it. And let's just start looking, and this is the first part of the video, okay? First part of the video is going to be me checking the Opel against this $1,600 Sekonic. And the second part of the video is me going through common emitters and just taking a look at, you know, there are values, there are, there are A, R9 values, uh, CRI, stuff like that, and just kind of getting a feel for is SST20, you know, that much better than XPL high or vice versa, and I, I'm not taking any sides here, everyone's got their own taste, but let's take a look at the data. Okay, now before I start shining flashlights in here and, and kind of looking at how accurate these two devices are against each other, do realize that I should be doing this in a darkened room, and Previously, when I was doing my own testing, I was using a darkened room, but it's catch-22, right? I got video on, you need to see, so I got these low, and hopefully that will suffice. Let's take a look at uh, something pretty ubiquitous, which is the Hank light with an SST 20 4000K, all right? So this is a high CRI option. Uh, it tends to run a little green sometimes. Uh, my sample that I got from Hank is very neutral, and let's take a look at that. So I've got the Opel already connected. I'll go ahead and turn it on. I'm kind of at a low ramp right now, and you'll notice that as I'm holding it over the meter, this stuff's bouncing around a lot. But let me kind of steady my arm here. All right. Okay, and as I steady, you'll see that it's bouncing around 3,900, right? A little above, a little below, somewhere in there. And it's saying that the RA value, which is basically R1 through R8 mixed, is about 97.5, something like that. And we also have some X and Y values. Now, these X and Y values can be converted into delta UV, which will give you a very good idea of whether this is above or below the BBL line, so whether it's green or rosy. And if you want to know more about that, Go ahead and click in this link that I have right here about what Delta UV is and what it means and what black body locus means. So go take a look at that video. But if you already know, uh, so we're seeing about, uh, about oh, 7, 97, 98, something like that. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at the Sekonic. So I'll come over here. Oh, it turned off on me. Turn it back on. Go past the screen. All right. And click. All right. So I got a measurement of, let's see here, about 403963 and a delta UV of almost flat, 0006. So very even. 
Now, at the bottom here, we also have an RA value, which says 97.1, and that's really close to what we got on the Opel. And that's where these things, uh, so the features we're seeing here, that's where these overlap, okay? So now you can see that they're doing a pretty decent job, both of them. Now, the one thing where the Sconic really shines is that I can click into a CRI screen and see individual CRI bands, and I can see that the R9 value is about 94. Now, 100 would be perfect, and just so you know, I've never even seen a perfect 100. We've got some studio lights at my work, LED and tungsten. The LED lights are very good, but they still don't have, they're, they're like, you know, 96, 97. They're bouncing all around. The studio lights that are tungsten are amazing. Let me go ahead and recall that really quickly. Let's see here. So the studio lights are tungsten. Let me recall that and show it to you. All right, so there's your, your that's perfection on the Sconic meter. See, it's right at 3,000K, which is what we want. That's tungsten balanced. You see that the Delta UV is almost exactly flat again, a little bit below, and 99.5. And then when I click into the um, CRI here, you can see that's that's the most perfect light I've ever seen, okay? And again, not only these are these values extremely high, but take a look at the spectrum. You can see it's just, there's nothing missing from the spectrum. All right, so that's the most perfect light I've ever seen. Let's go back to our values here that we were measuring. So you can see that on the spectrum of this SST20, that, you know, it's not perfect, but it's this is a really good light. This is amazing. I don't think people, I mean, I, I think SST20s are highly regarded as beginner emitters and people point other users to SST20s when they ask. But I think that actually gets a lot of hate later on. I think that people, you know, tar start talking about how great 219Bs are and, and XPL highs. And I, I'm, I'm measuring this SST20 and it just looks gorgeous. All right, so um, I guess I got a little off topic onto a, a specific emitter, but I hope that kind of satisfies part one. I mean, let's do one more light. Let's do um, let's do something gross. Let's do this uh, this one, which is uh, SST forty, and uh, it's very green. It's a pretty gross light. Let me hold that right here. Oh, I got to hold a little higher. That's that's another downfall to the Opel. Not a big deal, but it, it really overloads very easily. You know, you want to run these things pretty high. You want to run them at their highest level because at low levels, the emitters tend to perform worse, tend to be greener. Uh, so, you know, you really want this thing to be on a high mode, which is what I got. But then, of course, it's blowing it out. So this Conic doesn't blow out, but I'll try and raise this up higher. And as I go further away from the Opel, I get into its safety margin. And you can see that this emitter is around uh, 5,200 maybe. It's low RA, right? Okay. So 5,200, 62 or something. Now let's go over to this Conic at the same distance. And okay, let's see what we got here. So 5,400, a little higher. The Delta UV says 0138. Now, again, if I'd taken these XY values and plugged them into the computer, I could have seen how they measure. I have done that, and I'll show you my data in a moment. And um, I noticed that it's not that far off. And then the RA, you can see it says it's low at 65. And then here is the CRI. Now, now the, what you're going to notice when I hit CRI is something that the Apple won't tell you is that R9 value. And look at that. The R9 value is negative 52. And before you cry foul, negative 52 is definitely possible, all right? The, the max is 100, but our, our values can go below zero. So this is a very green, very kind of ugly light. So let's kind of wrap up part one here with this idea of is the Opel good enough versus the uh, Sekonic? And uh, let's take a look at this data that I have here. I got a little sheet here that I kind of worked on. And um, I'm going to point this for a second, and then I'll put it on the screen for a few seconds digitally so you can, you can pause the video and look at the values. But I just want to point out that this is Bean's Opel. This is my Opel. And when you look across, 
the values do not vary that much. You can see that here we got a CCT on this uh, emitter, which is an SW35 on Moonlight. You can see that it's 36 low, 3600 low, and this is almost 3600. So, I mean, that's really close. You can see that these both have it fairly neutral in the Delta UV, and that you can see that the RA values are identical. Uh, that same, let's take a look at different emitter. Let's take a look at this XBL High on Turbo from Hank, and you'll see that Beans Opal has it at just over 4,000. Mine has it just over 4,000. Again, the Delta UVs are very similar. One thing I did notice was that both the Opals were pretty lockstep on what they were doing. You can see here, this is you know green. It's above BBL. At, it's about 130, and here's 130. And here we have it below BBL for a different emitter at 140 and 136. But what I noticed was that the Delta UV measurements tended to be a little bit more off center, let's say, you know, a little more accentuated to the end, ends of the of the spectrum than the Sakonic was. And what I mean by that is if you you see where the Sakonic is rating it as pretty neutral and they say that it's neutral as well, and then when the Sakonic says it's below BBL, they say it's more below BBL than what I got with the Sakonic. And up here, when the Sakonic says it's above BBL, they say it's even more above. So that's something to notice. It, it wasn't off dramatically. And, you know, for 25 bucks, oh my gosh, what a value. So anyways, let me throw that uh, chart up there. Uh, here it is up on the screen digitally. You can go ahead and pause it now and take a look at it. And then once you're done looking at it, stay for part two where I'm going to measure all these different lights in front of me on the Sakonic and kind of take a look at what they look like as far as R9 values and CCT. Okay, welcome to part two. Now we're going to delve into all these different emitters. I'll tell you what they are and what they're expected to be as far as CCT, and then we'll look at them on the Sakonic, get an idea of the nature of different emitters here. We're going to be looking at SSD20s, XBL highs, 219Bs, 219Cs, 219Fs. Uh, let's see what else I got up here. Oh, and I also got an SBT90 over there. So these are common emitters that you're going to run into. Let's take a look at a couple of them. So let's start with some 4000s, all right? So we had previously taken a look at this SST20 4000 from Hank. I'm going to put it on turbo, and I'm going to run all these on turbo, just because I think turbo is the way that most people use their lights, right? I mean, not always. Sometimes you walk around the house trying not to wake people up, but I'm just pointing out that, you know, when you're showing it off to your friend and looking at color tints, usually turbo's where we're at. So here's the SST20. You'll notice it's got great R1 through R15. Uh, the R9 especially is a really important factor because it's what makes skin tones and the color red look really, really good. Let's take a look at the spectrum here, and you can see that at turbo, it's coming in right around 4,000, and the delta UV is almost flat, a little bit above BBL, but I mean, that's a really neutral light. I also want to point out that color tint tends to, not always, but it tends to warm up as you dim the light. So it cools off, tends to cool off as you go to turbo, and then the delta UV tends to turn a little warmer as you go to turbo and tends to be greener when it's cooler. So that's a weird, funny thing. So it goes warmer and greener when it's low and cooler and rosier as it goes high. All right, let's take a look at another light here. So that was SST 4000. Now let's take a look at XPL High 4000. So that would be this one. And this is an amazing bin of XPL High that I'm going to show you here. This is came from Torch Labs. I believe this was handpicked. It's very rosy. Here, let me get it a little. There we go. A little bit higher. Okay, here we go. So there we go. We got 3,800. So it's a little warmer than 4,000. Again, that has to do with flux binning as well as tint binning. Notice it's definitely below BBL. I, I'm going to tell you, if you don't know these numbers well, that I can detect easily about 30, so, so, so 0 0.0030 above or below. So if it's zero, zero, so negative 0030, I will say that's a rosy light. I can tell just with my eye. 
And if it says 0 0.0030 positive, I'll say, okay, I can tell that's green. Now, if it's like around 0 0.0010 either way, it's usually just looks neutral to me. So, you know, I won't split hairs here with small little values like that. But uh, let's take a look at the CRI. And you can see that this is where XBL, even when it's a really beautiful tint bin, kind of lets you down. And that is that nothing is extremely high. It's all around 80s, which is pretty good. But this R9 is where it really lets you down. Uh, it's not negative like this ugly light over here was that I showed you earlier, but uh, it's not a, a really high value. Also, um, I was talking to Artie, and Artie was mentioning that when he photographs XBL highs, that they always just look ye more yellowish and less rosy on camera than, you know, with our eye, they look rosy, and on camera, they look yellow is what I'm trying to say. And, and the thing is, is especially compared to 209Bs, right? And what I'm noticing is, let's go back to the spectrum, is that even though it's below delta UV, look at how much of the spectrum is in that kind of yellow band. And that's why I think it photographs yellow. I think our brain just sees the overall mix. It's kind of like a psychovisual thing. Our brain sees the overall mix. And then again, this is just me and my conclusions I'm coming to. But if I show you, let's say, um, 219B now. So let's see, 4,219B would be this one. All right. So here is a 219B in 4,000. Let's get that one. Okay. Take a sample. There we go. So 4,000 below delta UV and uh, higher CRI. But see how that there's still a lot of yellow, but do you see how there's more orange and more red than showed up in the XPL? I think that's why this thing looks rosier to the camera, even though the delta UV is actually not as rosy. Now, now, let me explain. If I shine both of these at a wall right now, my eye is going to see this XPL as a rosier emitter because it was, you know, below delta UV more. But the way that the spectrum lays out, it just photographs differently. So it's something interesting that we've noticed. And if we go to the CRI for this uh, 209B, you can see that the R9 is extremely high. This is, this is why 219B is such a beloved emitter. Now, let's take a look at 219C because it's kind of a kissing cousin to 219B. It tends to be a little lower CRI, but it tends to have a higher output. So you're just kind of you know trading one thing for another. Let's take a look at this. This is uh, 219C in 4000. Okay, let's go to turbo there. Let's hit it. Okay. So, all right, so I'm still on the CRI screen, and you immediately see that the R9 value is a little lower, as well as some other values. It's still very high overall, but you can see that that's the trade-off between these two. Let's take a look at the CCT. This one on turbo was running uh, above 4,000 and a little bit above delta UV. Now, that's very neutral. It's very pleasing to the eye, but I would never say this was a rosy emitter, whereas this one was under delta UV enough that it definitely looks rosy. And, and next to each other, you can tell the difference. They're both extremely beautiful lights, but you can tell. Now let's take a look at uh, Samsung. Let's take a look at a Samsung 4000K. So this is an LH351D 4000K Samsung in here. And this is a high CRI emitter, but I find Samsung's pretty green. Let's take a look. All right. Okay, there we go. So it's running a little below 4,000 here, but look at that delta UV. So yeah, it is a green emitter. It's not, it's not disgustingly green. I think disgustingly green gets when you get to 0 0.0100, so like 100 on the end here. That's when I say, okay, yeah, that's, that's disgusting. But this is just greenish. And also notice that its values are pretty darn good. So I think that Samsung and 219C kind of are similar emitters. These are greener, the Samsung is, and they run brighter than the 219C. 
So uh, if you're a tint snob, I would go to 219C. And if you want brightness, I'd go to the Samsung. But they're both high CRI, very nice emitters for rendering color. Let's take a look at a couple more. Let's take a look at a 219. This is a Nietzsche 219F. It's kind of a new emitter. And uh, I'm already on high here. Let me hit it. All right, there we go. So here you go, Nietzsche 219F. You can see, again, the R9 is a little worse than 209B, but very high values otherwise. And it is a cool emitter, almost 5,000. So this is an almost 5,000. But look, it's Delta UV is very neutral. When I put it lower, okay, so here's a lower value, you'll notice that it gets greener, okay? So it cools off and gets very neutral when it's on high or turbo. Let's also take a look at, let's see here, let's take a look at, this is 219C, Nietzsche 219C, but this time 3000K. So this is a very warm light. So let's take a look. Okay, get through the dragon modes here. All right, there you go. So this is about 31.5K, almost dead neutral. And let's take a look at the CRI here. Very low CRI, much lower than the 219C that was 4,000. So notice that there's different R values depending on the CCT of the emitter, not just the type. Because remember, this was a uh, 219C right here, and this one had a much higher R9 value. Let's take a look again. Okay. Yeah, you can see how much higher the R9 is on that. So... That's the 209C3000. And let's see here. we got a couple lights over here I didn't, I didn't do yet. So let's take a look at these two and this one. And I think we're done. I think I've hit them all. Okay, this jet beam right here has a Nietzsche 219B SW45K. This is that legendary rosy emitter. So let's see how rosy it can get. And this also is... Now, this is my best guess. This is a... 2018 emitter. It's an older stock, and I think it's D180 bin, but I don't have confirmation of that. But it is very rosy. So let's go ahead and get a sample on that. Okay, great R values here. You can see that the R9 is extremely high. And then let's go to this screen, and you can see that it is very rosy. This is the rosiest single color emitter that I have. What I mean by single color is not a tint mix, right? Not taking like 2700K and mixing it with like 5000K or 6500K, which I will show you in a moment. But um, the not all SW45Ks are this rosy. They are all rosy. I haven't seen one that wasn't below Delta UV yet. But this one is extremely rosy. And I, I, something else that I noticed, which, let me see if this pans out. Let me turn around and grab a ray light here. This ray light has the same kind of circa stock of emitter. And what I noticed, and check this out. This is an interesting thing when I was doing my testing. Okay, let me get a sample here. Okay. Now, let me... Put this, just make sure this is bright. Okay, so I'll leave it bright here, over here for a second while we talk. Now, notice that I just measured it at about the same tint I measured this one at, okay? So I think these are from the same, you know, era. Now, the reason why I'm using this one is because it's, you know, a triple emitter and it's brighter. This jet beam just doesn't have a really high-powered driver, but what I notice is as I leave it on for a while and I let the emitters heat up, you may know that emitters tend to kind of drop in output as they heat up. Well, I also notice that these emitters get rosier as they heat up. Heat up. At least these 209Bs do. So let me, let's see here. It's getting a little bit warmer. Let's measure it again. Okay. And there you go. See? Now it's uh, negative 0164. So that is, this is the single light that I have that gets the rosiest with having consistent color tint, meaning that all three emitters are the same CCT at, at 4,500. And I think it's really interesting that they kind of get a little bit 
warmer and rosier as they uh, heat up. Now, I think the only emitter we have left here... Oh, nope, there's two more. What do you got to do? The SBT90. So let's do that. Three, four, there we go. SBT90, which tends to be pretty green at low ramp. So let's, let's start with low ramp and see what we get here. Okay. So there you go. That's a very green emitter there at low ramp. Uh, it's uh, 157 positive, right? And let's go ahead and take a look at the CRI, which, you know, it's it owes R9, right? It's in debt on R9, which totally makes sense. But but even more than that, look at how terrible this R12 is. I mean, this is you know you. I mean, it's a thrower, so you're just trying to discern objects at far distances. So I'm not gonna get too you know upset about it having low color rendition. But I think it's interesting how the reds. You see how there's almost no reds here, and how even the blues are kind of kind of terrible. All right, now let's go back to the spectrum here, and let's put it on turbo. Well, this is high. Let's do high first. Now, notice it says it's over. That's something we got a lot on the Opal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it down. This has the ability to stop it down so that I can measure it this close anyways. Let's see here. Okay. So there you go. You can see that it kind of uh, cools off a little bit and the Delta UV lowers. It gets a little more neutral. Let's take a look at the CRI, see if they changed at all. Eh, not massively. It's all about the same. I mean, the R9 got <laughs> negative 10 points better, but uh, it's all about the same. All right, let's try on turbo. And I'm going to have to stand up a little bit here, stand away from it, because turbo is going to blast it. There we go. Let's see if I can get a good reading. There we go. And look at that. That's the tail of SPT, isn't it? It becomes neutral at turbo and cools off a lot. So I, it's kind of like SPTs just need to be run on turbo all the time. Let's take a look at the CRIs. And uh, look at that. The R9 actually improved as well as did some of the others. This uh, R12 is still troubling. But, uh, you know, hey, it gets better when it gets on turbo. So now you know why everyone's always blasting their SPT90 emitters on turbo. And the last light we're going to look at, there we go. So the last light is a tint mix of E21As. Oh, you know what? Before we get to that, I remembered now that I forgot to show you this light. This is E21A at 3500. So this is just a consistent emitter all the way across. Let's kind of get enough light here. It's a mule. Let me measure it. Okay, here we go. So this is E21A Nietzsche. And you can see that it's got amazing color values. The R9 is insanely high. And for 3500, it is bang on. And it's also very rosy. People wonder if the E21As are rosy. I find them extremely rosy. So that's E21A, all one CCT. Now let's say you are a fiend for rosy emitters. You, pink is in. That's what you like. So one way to do that, and as I've described in my other video on CCT tint and all that, which, you know, I'll have the link up here again if you want to go look at it. One way to artificially get a rosy light is to mix two different CCTs. And so in here, I have about the biggest tint mix you can have. I got a lot behind me. Let's see here. You'll see that this light right here is also tint mix. I got four or five of these back here, but let's see if we can get this on camera. There we go. You can see that the one in the right is not as cool nor as warm as this one on the left. I mean, this one's warmer and yet cooler, right? So let's take a look at this. Actually, you know what? Since I have it out, let's take a look at this one first. So by doing that, you're forcing it to be rosy, right? Let's see what we got here. And measure. There we go. So this E21A is coming around the same rosiness of that 3500 we had. But the difference is twofold. One, it's cooler. And also, you know what? I didn't really have... Eh, there we go. Let's see. do this. I didn't really have this on turbo yet. 
There we go. Now it's on turbo. It's even a little rosier. So I find that the E21A, and again, this was 21, I think it's 2700 and 5000 K. So that's rosy, but not insanely so. But this one, this one's 2000, well, 2000 up here, and 6500. So 2000, 6500, and this one's very rosy. So let's take a look at that. Okay. And remember, these are cold. I expect these to get more below BBL as they warm up. In fact, here, let me uh, turbo this and kind of set it off to the side so that we can let it heat up and check that out. But notice how just completely below BBL this is right off the bat. And I love that it comes in around, the mix comes in around 4,000K, which is such a great tint. So, I mean, all of these are 4,000K in here, right? And so if you don't want to play tint lottery, if you don't want to mess around, because a lot of these are hand-picked bins. I mean, you know, most 219Cs tend to be very green. Mine's neutral. Why? Because I went to a manufacturer that was hand-picking them, and then you get a price tag to boot. But here we can go to Hank Wang, get a KR4, just tell him to throw this, this mix in there, and then all of a sudden, bam, you get this below BBL, you know, performance. I think it's an awesome thing. So this is warmed up a little bit. Let's measure it again. And yep, it's even a little rosier. You know, and in fact, that's as rosy as the rosiest light I have, I said. So I'm at the end here of, of this whole thing. I hope you found this illuminating, not only to the point of the measuring devices themselves, the Opel and the Sekonic, but just things like how CCT changes over ramp and how Delta UV changes over ramp. I'm releasing new content all the time, so feel free to subscribe if you want to be notified of that, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.